When I first heard The Flash was going to get a full movie starring Ezra Miller, my first thought was, I, I don't like Ezra Miller. And then I saw the trailer months later and thought, I still don't really like Ezra Miller as an actor. He's done nothing to impress me, but this looks pretty damn good. But as we all know, both Marvel and DC have given some fantastic movie trailers, and the final product is anything but that. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium, Thor, 4, Love and Thunder, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yeah, I said it. I said what everybody else is thinking. So I went in, cautiously optimistic, hoping for the best results, and I am happy to tell you this. I saw the movie. So that's nothing. But we have to go through the intro so that I lead you into this video a little bit more. Subscribe. Let's begin. Hey, remember a long time ago when I said Ezra Miller hasn't impressed me in anything? Like 20 seconds earlier when I said it? Well, I just ate my own words because the Flash movie has a really good performance by Ezra Miller. Nigh. Two. Good performances by them. Yeah, them. There's more than one. Because here's the really quick spoiler-free breakdown of the plot, the concept, the, the large overarching thing. We have a character who's sad and broken. I know, that's every superhero character on the planet Earth. The Flash misses his mommy, and his daddy's in prison. He says mommy and daddy. I don't think that's true, but I'm saying it for him. And he wants to somehow rebuild this fractured family dynamic. And the only way to do so is by running really fast and getting sad. And ultimately going so quickly that he breaks the sound barrier and he's able to travel backwards through time itself. <laughs> it's crazy. And he does it. And this leads to a fractured series of timelines that spaghettis out all over the place. It's a complete disaster. But he wants to save his mom. And along the way, he might make a couple friends. And that's all I'm giving you on the plot. That's it. You can see that in the trailer. Everything else we'll save for a spoiler video that I'll probably throw up next week. So again, subscribe to the channel. You have nothing to lose. It's free. The subscription is absolutely free with four easy installments of $3.95. Now, the naysayers may say this, and you may have heard some of these things. The movie looks like crap. The effects are a disaster. The CGI is half-baked. Some of this stuff is very true. The CGI, for the most part, is very serviceable. It's nothing earth-shattering. I saw a clip from Transformers 1, a movie that's 16 years old, off of Twitter, that looked freaking fantastic. I recently rewatched the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise and was blown away by how good those movies look. The effects in those, the CG is state-of-the-art and holds up. It holds up far better than... Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Shidia, or a lot of this new stuff because they are churn and burn in the animation department. They don't have time. The director has since come out from The Flash and said that this was an intentional stylistic look. Why there are big battles that take place in seemingly empty desert space. It does look surreal. I do think there is truth to that, but also I don't really care at the same time. Here's the deal. I don't need top-of-the-line effects. I just need a good story. I need compelling characters. The effects is the cherry on top. And that's the good thing about The Flash. It does have a good narrative. It has an interesting structure. People praised Spider-Man No Way Home because of the reintroduction of some of their fan favorites. Working together. Most of that's in the last half hour of the movie. They somehow kind of ignore or just allow the first hour and a half to be kind of dumb. The plot of No Way Home is stupid. Peter Parker's sad that his friends can't get into college because he's a superhero, so he talks to his scientist wizard buddy, and he convinces him to erase their memories of Spider-Man. It's asinine. And of course, he can't shut his mouth, so while Doctor Strange is doing the spell, <laughs> Peter's like, hey, uh, 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 Dr. Strange, Mr. Strange. <sighs> Shut up, kid. I'm trying to do this. I don't want Aunt May to forget about me. Shut the fuck up, kid. I'm trying to... <sharp inhale> <sharp inhale> Mr. Strange. God, I hate you. Rant aside, I still enjoy Spider-Man No Way Home. I don't love it, though, like a lot of people. I don't think it's the second coming. 
of Spidey. I think it's a solid flick, dumb plot, but the little things are what add up to something truly special. It's all about the little moments. And The Flash is full of little moments, but on top of that, it's got the the big thing working for it. The story itself is something that's easily relatable to people. Kid loses his mom, he wants to see her again. And Ezra Miller sells it damn good in this movie. The fact that there's two different versions that act wildly different because there's the past form and the present, they, they make for a great dynamic. I would say 99% of the time, when they're together, it looks like two different people. It doesn't feel fake or artificial. Really good job on the effects work there. Where it's shoddy is where we get these big scenes going on, bombastic, tons of stuff happening. But I, again, I don't care. Like I love the movie Kung Fu Hustle, which I'll be talking about in this channel soon just for fun because I watched it with my son recently and loved the crap out of it all over again. That movie does not have what you would consider great effects as far as realism. It's Looney Tunes on crack. People are flying all over the place. There's bullet time, slow motion stuff going on. That's what's happening in The Flash. It's surreal. It's wild. It's out there. And I'm all about it. This was a fun ass movie from beginning to end with some great emotions sprinkled throughout. Michael Keaton, as we know, is back as Batman. He's all over in the trailers. You have Supergirl in this who is smoking hot to look at. That's enough for most people right there, but on top of it, she's actually a great character. Michael Keaton as Batman hasn't missed a beat. The guy looks great still. Still has a physical presence, still has that wit and charm. Even Ben Affleck is at the top of his game here. He looks fantastic. The suit has never looked nicer on him. And I just, he feels more comfortable in the role, at least to me personally. The movie's also doing some cool stuff with time. Time displacement. Showing different imagery, moving around, in and out of focus, in and out of different layers. There's some really interesting stuff on display here. It's trippy at times. I don't see the hate that it's getting. I don't get it. I'm looking for a fun, big-ass comic book movie. This absolutely delivers. Where a lot of people were turned off with Batman v Superman because it was so all over the place narratively, it was hard to connect with any of these characters. The tone was very dire, somber, you know, just overly gritty and dark. That's not that fun to watch. You can step back and say, good for Snyder for trying something new, and I appreciate him for that, and it is a visual feast. Snyder makes beautiful movies. It's far prettier than this as far as the cinematography goes, but The Flash is so damn exciting. There's some campy stuff for sure. There is some really great stuff along with it. It's a mixed bag, but one I will absolutely revisit and hope that we could possibly get more down the road, even though I know this whole thing is getting rebooted by James Gunn. That doesn't mean we can't pull some of the stuff that works over somehow. We are in this shit show of a multiverse after all in both the DCU and the MCU. So let's really use it to our advantage. Music, set pieces, sound design. Sound design is top tier. This is Transformers level shit. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Good, easy watch. Yeah, visually, you could have pumped it up for sure. You could add more, you know, pixels, <laughs> more detail. Things can always be improved. Things can always be better. But I think this is a damn fine movie. Solid final little tip of the hat for the DCEU. One of them, I know we still have Blue Beetle and Aquaman too. This should probably have been the last hurrah. I don't, I don't foresee those getting anywhere near this. But let me know, maybe I'm dead wrong and you thought this whole thing was a complete train wreck from start to finish, it's possible. I don't claim to be the all-knowing expert. I'm a movie fan, I like what I like, you like what you like. I hope you just have some thoughts to back it up and not just say it's trash, because that's not anything. Please like the video if you enjoyed yourself a little bit. And if you really enjoyed yourself, make like Flash and haul ass to that subscribe button because I'd love to have you stick around. I post a lot of movie content each and every week. Need more bodies, need more eyeballs on this thing. I'd appreciate it. All right, take care.